Hey guys, what's up? I really like the new movies that are coming out, the new fantasies uh, that are coming out um, where the fantasy is taking place in the modern world. And I think this is just so much different than the fantasy that used to be taking place. If you look all the way back to like the 80s and 90s and the, the last century, um, all the fantasies were either all the way in the past or all the way in the future. They were either medieval or they were science fiction. And the thing about medieval fantasy is it's not necessarily in the medieval age. Medieval fantasy is just what they call fantasy that's sword and sorcery, that kind of thing. You know, like a sword uh, fantasy is called a medieval fantasy, but they had swords back in the ancient Greek days, you know? So it doesn't, just because it's medieval, it just means sword and sorcery. It's not like uh, medieval, you know, it had to happen in the 15th century or something like that. Because if you look at Excalibur and the King Arthur stories, that happened 2,000 years ago or whenever it happened or maybe 1,500 years ago. And it was pre-medieval, you know? But anything sword and sorcery, even Conan is considered medieval fantasy even though it took place in a Hyborian age, which is supposedly a long time ago, like pre-medieval. So that's kind of like the difference. Um, and so like, but that's what we used to get. That th That's the fantasy we used to get, you know? they used to get like just medieval fantasy, just the old sword and sorcery stuff. If you look at like the, the movies of the 80s, Krull, Conan the Barbarian, um, Clash of the Titans, you know? Clash of the Titans is medieval fantasy, but it happens in ancient Greece, which is like 2,000 to 3,000 years ago, you know? But it doesn't matter because swords were around uh, that long ago, and so was steel. And it, steel was not the first thing they made swords from, you know? Uh, it was iron, and then it was bra bra bronze and stuff like that, and then, oh, and then steel came after that. But that's kind of what like fantasy was about. It was all the way in the old ages. It was Merlin. It was like the wizards were very very old. Everything was very very old and in, in, in the past. Where recently, and I don't know what movie actually started this or what book or story started this you get modern day fantasy. If you look at Harry Potter, which is like the simplest thing to, to look at in fantasy, Harry Potter takes place in the modern world. And it's interesting because they're like, yeah, in the modern world, there's this alternate also world that's integrated, but you can't kind of find it. It's just hidden away where there's magic, magic happening and there's magical schools and there's people teaching magic and people performing magic and things like that. Um, really, really interesting, you know? And if you look at something like um, John Constantine and Hellblazer, and just like, you know, yeah, the, the comics and everything, or like the movie Constantine with Keanu Reeves, which is a great movie. Um, I really like that. I think it's a legitimate Constantine. Even though, even though I've heard people say about Keanu Reeves that he's not really a Constantine, I think he plays a great Constantine. And the thing about like Keanu Reeves and Constantine in the movie, it got me into Constantine and after that I read all of the comics. It's like the only series that really, I mean, I've, I've read all the comics and other series, but it's one of the very, very few series that I've read the whole thing. <laughs> Cause it's just so freaking good. And now I know it's hard to find them and stuff, but it's just so good. And what's interesting about like Keanu Reeves in the movie Constantine is it gets people into the comics of Constantine. And those are really, really good. Those are really, really good. But I'm gonna say the movie is just as legit. I couldn't get into the TV show just because it was on a channel on TV where there was just a lot of commercials and it was really annoying. Like you get into it a little bit and then there's a dumb commercial. I don't mean just like any commercial, like a dumb commercial. And I like, like basically most commercials are just dumb commercials. And, and I couldn't enjoy the thing. So I was like, you know what? It's not, wasn't, I didn't get into it that much that I was gonna tolerate all the commercials. So I was just like, okay, whatever. Uh, if it, if I'll, I'll, I'll watch it like later when they have it on Netflix without the commercials and it'll be just as good. And um, so that, that kind of thing happened. I don't know if that's the first thing that happened that broke fantasy out of uh, the medieval or the ancient or the old and um, into the, the modern day, you know? Um, that was that. Uh, there were a couple more like interesting fantasies that were kind of modern day, but also ancient, like the the Underworld series, which was pretty cool. It was like um, it was also like a medieval fantasy. There was swords, there was magic, there were like creatures and stuff like that. And um, 
but it was done in the modern day. And I think that's really, really cool. And if you look now, a lot, a lot, like if you look at just Netflix only, there's a huge portion of, I would say most of the fantasy on Netflix is modern day fantasy. You know, like whatever um, movies it is, even like Rag, uh, what is it? Uh, not Ragnarok, is it? Yeah, Ragnarok, the Ragnarok series. It's an interesting fantasy that's happening in the modern day. And it's cool how they're trying to like interconnect you know, the old fantasy, the wizards and the magic and the swords and the weaponry and the whole sort of like fantasy thinking about things, you know, into a modern setting. And they didn't do that before. Like even in the 90s, they didn't do that. If you look at the 90s, you could see like Xena Warrior Princess or Hercules the Legendary Journeys. These were all like medieval. Like I'm going to say medieval, but yes, I know they are they took place in ancient Greece. Uh, so it's like an ancient Greece Roman thing, which means that it could have taken place within like a thousand to 2000, up to even like three or 4,000 years ago, you know, but it's fantasy. So it doesn't actually have to exist in a real time. It's the only, the only reason it does is because when you have believable fantasy, you want to merge the things that are accepted as true and real and believable and then the one step beyond which brings your thinking to the another to the next level you know it's got to be like one foot in reality and one foot in fantasy for it to be real fantasy otherwise it's just abstract fantasy you know it's just pure fantasy where it has nothing to do with reality whatsoever you know um and so that's the kind of thing and i know like in some some things some like, like heavy metal to motion picture, they actually blended fantasy and science fiction. Even the Mad Max stories were sci-fi, but they were very, very like fantasy sci-fi. They were very like, what if? What if the world was post-apocalypse and went into this direction and there were crazy factions of these like, kind of like punk rock looking, the, I don't even know what, what kind of like denizens of this, you know, some kind of um, just area where there's no water, there's no gasoline, there's just sand everywhere. And they, all they do is like build cars and plunder other people's civilizations for their gasoline. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's funny, but, um, but yeah. Um, so, th so th there's that. But I don't, but I do, I do like it. I do really like that more. In fact, I like, I, I got into the modern fantasy a lot more than the older, older fantasy. If you look at like Netflix, there's the like medieval fantasy, like Merlin, which is like, you know, the, the, the show Merlin. And then there's other fantasy like um, Supernatural or something like that, you know, where it's just like modern day, but one step beyond, you know, but still in, um, in another world you know, not necessarily everything is, is this modern. It's sort of like, it's it take fantasy, like take it out of the old and put it in the present. And it's nice because like, they used to just have like, okay, take fantasy and leave it in the old or put it in the future, right? There's the fantasy of the future. And they did that a lot, you know, fantasy of the future. If you look at like 2001, A Space Odyssey, that's like, it's, it's, it's really like, it is sci-fi. But there's a, a level of fantasy in it. And if you look at 2010, which is the next movie that came out, that is pure fantasy because things started happening in 2010 that no one could explain. And that is fantasy. When things happen, you can't explain. <clears throat> On some level, it was science fiction, but it was, such, it was stretched to such a degree that whatever happened, like that person's experience when he went to Jupiter, and his experience of seeing the old man and seeing the little baby and being in that room and there's all these different things in that room and no one understands what the hell is going on, you know, that's fantasy. And the same thing happened in 2001 where they went to Jupiter and then the spaceships went into this black hole or something or or into the obelisk or something like that. And all of this, all these stars and all this like rays started like coming out of nowhere and the astronaut kind of fell into it or whatever and they really didn't explain it it was more of a fantasy story than a science fiction story like you know Battlestar Galactica was a science fiction story it's, it's the human race in the future fighting robots 
um, and spaceships and trying to get to Earth. I mean, that is pure classic sci-fi, you know, um, with not a lot of fantasy there. Everything is technological, everything is scientific, it's laser guns, there's no magic, there's no wizards, there's no swords at all. And so it's 100% it's sci-fi. It's not even like, they don't even put fantasy elements in it. And what's interesting about like the modern day fantasy is it just sounds, it just feels really, really cool. Even um, a, a story like um, The Stranger Things, right? That everyone saw that. A lot of people saw it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on Netflix. Really watch it. It's amazing. And I think they did three seasons already and they're doing a fourth season. That is fantasy. You could say it's horror because it's, a, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't call it horror because it's not scary. There's a monster. And yes, the monster might be a scary monster and the monster is coming after the kids and the other people and stuff like that. But it's not like horror. It's not trying to scare you really. I mean, it's a scary mom. Maybe it is to a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit of a thriller, you know, because it's a monster and stuff like that. But other than that, it's a hundred percent. It's, it's way, way pure fantasy just because the monster is unexplained that even though it was like, it's from another dimension or something like that, it's still, we don't understand it. It's coming through another dimension or it's coming through a portal, but we still don't understand it. We don't know anything about it. And um, the story, even though there's a little bit of sci-fi because it's a sort of, it's not necessarily sci-fi. There is technology in the mo in the series, but it's basically fantasy because it's monsters. It's sort of like, you know, the old classic monster fantasy, like, um, of, like, like the Norse stories, you know? Uh, uh, you know, like those stories where the monster is attacking the people, like in the, the old Norse story where the monster is attacking the Vikings and stuff like that. And um, and then they have to get like this, 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 this um, you know, kind of like hero to slay the monster and stuff like that. It's the kind of the same thing. Oh, the dragon is like destroying the village. So now we have to get a dragon slayer to like slay, slay the dragon so this dragon will destroy the village. It's sort of like that. The monster is, is attacking and we have to destroy the monster so it can't attack you know, anymore. And it's sort of like that story. And that's classic, um, that, that is classic fantasy, you know, like it's classic Norse fantasy, like uh, that Norse fantasy story with the monster and attacking the long houses and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Beowulf, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, like Beowulf. It's exactly the same thing, isn't it? Like, right, it, it's sort of like a Beowulf story where this monster is coming around attacking and they're like, we don't know what to do and we're going to have to get a hero to go and slay this monster. And it's the same thing that happened in uh, Stranger Things where we don't know what to do, but that little girl can pretty much, she's got the powers to slay the monster. So her powers are fantasy. They're complete fantasy powers, you know? And in the past, the only, this is what, like, if you look at the 80s and 90s, the, the the fantasies that were in the modern day were the superhero fantasies. Superman happened in the modern day. All the Batman movies happened in modern day. Like a lot of the movies happened in modern day. The Watchmen, which was a comic book that came out in the 80s by Alan Moore, happened in the modern day. There was some sci-fi in it. There was some fantasy in it. They had There was a little bit of people with superpowers. Um, some, some of the characters had superpowers. One of the characters was just all superpowers you know like he couldn't even like relate with people anymore because he was just so powerful um, but um the superheroes were the only ones that were like modern day fantasy and now they're like no we're gonna have witches and ghosts and warlocks and monsters and uh, magicians and wizards and stuff like that and i don't know when this started but even like only a few years back i don't remember it happening that much Whereas like, if you look at Netflix now, you, you'll be like, you know, you could see like how, if you click on fantasy movies, you're gonna see like most of them are in modern day fantasy. Where if you go to like 80s fantasy movies, most of them are in the old day sword and sorcery, you know, that kind of thing. They were all, um, you know, like they were all sort of like sword and sorcery, you know, they were all swords in the past and stuff like that. And some other fantasy that there was a little bit of fantasy in the 80s, it was modern day, you know, but not so much like never ending story. Never ending story was in the modern day, but the kid kind of like went to this other world. There was, he was reading about this book, book a world in a book. And then he actually like went to this world, which was this, was this magic book or something like that. And that was a little bit modern day fantasy, but they really didn't have a lot. 
they had modern day sci-fi like they live which was a modern day science fiction where it was like you know that the world is actually populated by these aliens and stuff like that and you can't tell that they're there unless you wear these certain glasses and then you can see them and stuff like that and i think it was a cool movie it was because it, it was just so absurd um and they wore these rolex watches <laughs> like like you know and and that was modern fantasy even like the television um the television series v v for visitors was also modern modern sci-fi you know so sci-fi they had like modern day sci-fi they just didn't have modern day fantasy and i still don't know what the first modern day fantasy story was because if you just look back a few years there weren't so many and now they're prevalent now there's like the most of the fantasy that you see now are like modern day fantasy and you know yes they had like in the 90s i think is when um constantine the, the comic book came out and they were doing comic books of constantine I'm maybe in the 80s but maybe in the 90s but whatever they they were doing it a while ago and that was a very very you know modern day urban fantasy is what they were calling it at the time and now it's like so prevalent like every freaking every, every every fantasy on netflix is a modern day fantasy and it's really even like hard to find an old fantasy but it's like modern day but sword sorcery old weapons and you know old magic and things like that so yeah man so let me know what you're thinking in the comments thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe share it with your friends and check out my other videos and i will see you guys in another video later